Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the show. And on today's episode of the show, I want to be reviewing the most expensive and dare I say innovative address in Ekbe right now. And I will even say in Lagos, not the expensive part, the innovative part. Isimi Lagos by Landway. And they have been doing lots, lots of PR work. They've been in the news recently. And I've done several um, reviews in the past. I did a review when it launched in 2021. And this is a 2024 review, just going into 2025. So this review is good for another couple of months. So let's actually go into this estate. We're going to be looking at the price here. We're going to be looking at how far the work has gone. We're going to be looking at the history as well, how it has grown, how it has appreciated. Also, we're going to be giving our opinion based on um, being a stakeholder in this industry and we're going to be looking at the projections as well so let's go there let's go there quickly so let's look at the history of isimi lagos isimi lagos launched 2021 it launched with lots of pomp and pageantry and i i, I would make the statement and um, pose it the landway was a at the top of the market then they had such a large market and brand share they had come from a ton of very, very successful projects. So you see me, Lagos was not just going to be um, another, you see me, Lagos was just going to be another feather in their cap. You see me, Lagos was not their major thing. They had a lot of residential development going on for them. And so it was a golden year in 2021 when you see me, Lagos launched over 305 acres of land, government allocation, sea of old land, and they were trying to sell the vision that it was just um, going to be a wellness um, slash sustainable slash green city. And so many of the developers that had started building in Lagos were getting the flack that, oh, everything you're building is just a concrete jungle. So here comes in Isimi, and it was really, really nice while you know, it kind of lasted. And then the features were a golf course, a bicycle, bicycle racks, renewable energy, recreational center. You had a farm shop, you had a tech valley, outdoor gym, helipad, horse table, forestry, lakeside view, spa, meeting rooms, hiking path, and a, and a helipad. So it was it was really 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 good, and you know, it was it was received well, I would think. Um, back then in 2021 when it launched. Obviously, what they mostly had then was 3D renderings and every single T was planned to the to the last T, amphitheaters. You had, um, I don't know if that has changed now, you had a promenade in the, obviously in the 3D, um, it was just so, so, so amazing. And it really, really good, it looked good on paper. And like I said, it was released at a time when Landway had so much positive goodwill that everybody believed that they were able to deliver on what they said they were going to do. So um, I think one really, really interesting thing is the backyard farm that I wanted to also specially point out. But one of the values of Isimi Lagos is that it's going to be a sustainable city. So everything that you want to eat in the city it's being grown in the city. So clean energy, no GMO, nature, you're surrounded by nature. So they encourage farming, they encourage each person having their own backyard farm. And then there's the backyard farm that, um, where people can go buy produce as well. And you know, it's becoming more and more of a reality. And every now and then it brings people around. And lots of brands are coming to showcase 
what they have and what have you. And then when it comes to transportation, closely following from the fact that this is going to be a sustainable city for what you eat, it's also going to be 100% smokeless and a noiseless community. And then these electric vehicles will be able to transport people from area to area within the city. It's kind of going to be like the, the city's shuttle. And it's going to be 100% free for people that live there. And, you know, this is very, very progressive. They already have some of these vehicles on ground. They have some developments that are already ongoing in Isimi, Lagos. The very first video that we watched was the nature cottage where people are kind of already booked short stays there. And um, these are ARVs or ATVs where people can actually move around. And it's clean energy powered by um, um, electricity. And then you could also come in through the lagoon. It's a three-pronged approach of movement. You could come in with your car and just stop at the gate. They're not going to allow your diesel or petrol-powered car inside. You could come in with a helipad, or there's a helicopter. Um, you can come in a helipad. There's a, heli there's a helicopter, there's a helipad. And then if you want to use the car inside, you could get your Tesla. He brought um, two Teslas in to showcase that. And, um, you know, this this division for the city, and it's, it's so nice, it's so, it sounds so good and it just sounds so progressive. And, um, you know, you, you think Elon Musk in the American situation slash American POV, and when he, he wanted to start SpaceX, these things were just looking too futuristic. He said he wanted to go to Mars and they are launching and going to outer space. When he said he was going to do Tesla, it was like, okay. When he started with the cyber truck as well, lots of people did make fun. And so I appreciate the fact that although ambitious, you need people of ambition to continue to push the tape, to continue to push the boundary of what is acceptable and what people say this is normal. And I think Landry has been able to even at least sell this vision. And Pastor Matthew, I believe, taught a lot of developers back then that it is okay to promise big but kind of deliver and then promise the biggest water park like i said i mean people knew the land way was eventually they were eventually going to deliver but then it just seemed like it was over promising but like little by little day after day they are really knocking on every single thing in the in the list in the futures list of what they want in this city and so what some of you are here for, your investors, you're looking at what's the appreciation like and what's the projection like, and let, let's go there. That's what I'm what I'm here for. So ever since 2021, um, let's look at how properties here have appreciated. So land we launched Origin One, which was where you could buy land, and then they launched the village, which is where you could buy apartments. Um, one bedroom, two bedroom apartment, and also maisonettes. And they would later go on to launch the emergence. Um, I think that was the last one they launched before the price just went really, really, really crazy. And so, what was the price like before on um, all of this? Um, <laughs> yeah, all of all of this started and. Um, so many of you will be aware of the price is pretty steep. Like I said, it is the most expensive address in Ekpe right now. But it was not so about three months ago, three years ago, rather than 2021 when it launched. So for the village, the two-bedroom maisonette was going for 45 million naira. Just think about that. One-bedroom maisonette was going for 35 million naira. And in the original one, there was going to be a cluster of 50 acre friendly homes and in fact what they said was that they didn't want you to build in more than 60 percent of your land you have to use the 40 percent for greenery and then they were even um let me just stop here there were even guidelines on the percentage of your house that should be brick and mortar so you needed to put um a certain percentage of your house. i think 40 percent or 20 percent needed to be made of glass so it was, <laughs> and it was going for 45 million then for two bedroom. Um, it's it's crazy in the sense that it's a combination of um, factors that was obviously affected our currency such that nobody can offer you any building, nowhere in Lagos now 
with 2 bedroom 45 million it's such a crazy thing because what would the bill of quantity look like i don't know that they have delivered any of these homes to any of these people that did subscribe at this point because it's, it's suicide so then for the land in the origin one the land was going for 300 square meters was going for 35,000 naira per square meter and then if you do your math 35,000 per square meter a 300 square meter land would be 10.5 million 10.5 million naira for a sea of all government allocation land facing a major expressway in where 2021 was good times and i congratulate as many of you that invested then um but now the land is starting from 300,000 naira per square meter and the least amount of plot you can get is 250,000 250 square meter rather so if you do like I did a little mass, that's going for 75 million for 250 square meter plot in Ekbe. If you want to get land in um, Isimi, Lagos. And then I wanted to do like a comparison on the, on the growth from 2021 to now. So if you wanted to buy a 300 square meter land back then, it was 10.5 million naira. A 500 square meter land would go for a 17.5 million naira. More right now with 300 square meter land is going for 90 million naira. So if you do the math, the increase, the yield, the equity that has grown by in such a short time is 414%, over 400% in less than three years. So that means you're growing by almost or more than 100% year on year. That's what it's, you know, the land is growing. And now, whether this is actually the true value of that land um, is yet to be seen because um, if, if you're taking comparables from places like um, Alaro City, Macarius, then you can make a case for it because these people are, 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 are close by. Um, I also know a lot of it has to do with inflation, construction costs, and just the general depreciation of the Naira. And obviously, you know that real estate has to um, reflect those realities. So this is this is what the pricing is now for Isimi Lagos. Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's overpriced? Do you think it's just right what it's worth for a land like this in Ekbe with all of the, the services that they are offering? And, you know, that's that's always really up for debate, but like I always say, is what the the market is willing to pay for it, and you know we don't have so many platforms that actually track demand and track um, the history of sales of property. But for those of you that are watching, I do know some people that um, that got back then, um, that got property in Isimi back then. I don't know what the uptake is like. I don't know what the uptakers are looking like right now. I don't know what that demand is looking like or whether they are really selling because even some months back it was it was starting from a hundred thousand naira per square meter so you had the standard plots then you had the premium plot that were going for two hundred thousand naira per square meter then you had the luxury plot that was going for i think four hundred thousand naira per square meter now it is starting from three hundred thousand naira per square meter and you know that's just kind of um, interesting. Let me use that word interesting. But to me, I I think the land land is true legacy. Um, my end up being a semi Lagos, but that's not the actual legacy of Landway. Landway, like I said, they were already they had a huge market share back then, and they already had projects that they were doing. Um, all the way from 2019 to 2025 like this doesn't even start to cut the ones that are outside of this but urban prime was the most amazing and it was very 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 successful they had the urban prime one urban prime two urban prime three annex they also had urban prime four and um, these estates are habitable now if you go to ibrahim adesonia people are living there um, the uptake was great. The demand was so much so 
that people even had problems where they went to landway and they didn't get their allocation. Other <laughs> people were mixing up the allocation in that they paid and then the allocation was given to somebody else. And there was also a hit, there was something like, there was a hit piece by FIJ. Uh, a man claimed that he, from the UAE, he made some payments for Urban Prime 4 and he made a full payment and then he never really got his house. And, um, you know, they are award-winning, award-winning development. And to me, I think that coming from that, that was that was already the um, the legacy of Landway going into this. Even at that point as well, Landway had, um, they had the backing of many real talk groups in Lagos, RMs, um, BRG, even Popular Confidence at Chudu. They were selling, and these people were selling 20 units of apartments in one go. People would buy 20 units, people would buy 30 units. And the economy was even much better then. So you're not having all of all these um, construction cost issues and what have you. But very shortly after that, um, they went into other projects that are still at the moment ongoing and haven't been delivered. So this is the meal team. This is at Awoy Ayan, it started July 2020. And um, from that hit piece that I mentioned, some people still came out and, and said that they had some um, houses that they bought and they had finished paying for that wasn't yet delivered. This is not yet habitable. People aren't living there. And um, there's also the apartment along Shango Tedo. They didn't mention that there's also Terra Gardens along Shango Tedo, um, that ShopRite Road that is still ongoing. And like I said, there was a lot of pomp and pageantry off plan. Lots of people bought into it. But now the project is yet to be completed in, you know, in this few years. Uh, and there was a halt in the work for a very long time. And um, that's also part of the legacy of Landway as well. And they were doing lots of projects. They were doing lots of projects. You know, I in a, in a very recent video, before I go to that, this is the Hockley also at Abidjo, Abidjo GRA. And the Hockley was supposed to be a millennial town. And they were selling it as this um, place where you see people that are, up and coming, you have um, you know studios and people that are trying to just start up their career. They will be able to come here and come with you know their peers, rent or buy or purchase, and um, you know kind of climb the property ladder quite early with lots of prospects as well. So this also had a pause at some point. Um, people that had already made started making payments, they couldn't go ahead. They had a show unit as well. This is the show unit for there. And then they're saying, we're almost there. Thank you for trusting us. And I think the issue has mostly been with um, all of these developments that they started um, up after Urban Prime. So no one really, really, really fully materialized such that they were able to deliver on time. And we're going to go to why. In fact, we're not going to conjecture. It's going to come from the horse's mouth. Wale, Wale did say, Wale is the CEO and founder of Landu. He said why that happened, and we're going to go to it. But like I was saying, I, um, I talked about it in the developer that they are doing five developments in Eco Atlantic, and he was, he, he, check out the video. You know, it's a review of the biggest developer in Eco Atlantic five developments concurrently in this economy, you know, Dogo, because I don't think it should be that easy. I'm going to take the part of also the people that did pay and then didn't get what they deserved and also how fairly have they been treated up till now. Um, so that's another conversation, but just um, from the get-go, I, I do think that it's something that, um, it, it's, it, it's good to shoot for the stars and um, apparently didn't like, seem to reach it. So, um, like I said, they said, thank you for trusting us. Um, they are building to last and compromising quality and experience by Landway. And when I think about Wale Ayila, I think about this picture, about Elon Musk, he was in the Joe Rogan podcast. And now the political backdrop is that these two people are now conservatives and they supported Trump. And then 
if you look at um, his Instagram, it's protected, but then you can actually request to follow. This is also a picture by Wally. And it's just so funny. I'm like, okay, is this genius or this is broad um, in the sense that, um, as we're going to go into what he posted, in the real estate sector, right, our predators is coming from Wally Aguilera, directly from the horse's mouth. So he said, in the real estate sector where I operate, I can, it feels like chaos. What we call yam pepe, scatter, scatter. Inflation has turned the straightforward construction process into a Herculean task, swallowing reputations and questioning the integrity many of us have built over the years. For those of us in the off-plan development space, it's even tougher. Clients expect delivery, but with costs skyrocketing and contractors spiking variations on contracts, the challenges multiply. Imagine trying to manage over six contractors to complete a single home, all while dealing with rising costs and surplus skills due to a lack of technical training institutions. In the past two years, I've had to refund and cancel contracts for over 500 clients, a painful yet necessary decision. Watching your integrity and brand reputation take a hit is heart-wrenching. Clients are frustrated, and rightly so. They've saved their hard-earned money to buy their home, especially those converting foreign currencies, only to see those dreams delayed and costs multiplying like fertilized gary. It is a sad situation, and the economy has everyone in a chokehold. And uh, let me just speak on that a bit, because um, I empathize with him as like a business owner in the sense that these things can never be easy. I was talking with a, div um, I was talking with a client of mine, and then she was talking about how she converted some money to like bulk money to start a project when Naira was about uh, nine hundred, almost heading to one thousand. That was about a, a year ago, and some, yeah, it was about nine fifty going to it was not yet a thousand, and then she started the project only for dollar to pound now to be 2200 and you've converted to naira and then the prices have tripled so it's just almost like a triple a double so slash triple whammy so i do i do empathize with him but then when we look at it from the side of the other client the clients that have bought and you've put in your end your hard-earned money to a project, a delivery, or what have you. And then a developer comes and tells you two, three years down the line, oh, I'm sorry that I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, um, I basically cannot fulfill this. And for some time, they actually ask them, oh, are you going to be able to pay the difference? I'm kind of like breaking the contract. And let me even say the fact that if you were the one that broke that contract, maybe you defaulted in your payment, it will be cancelled. And most times your refund will be given less. It was 30% before, but some developers went up to 40% admin fee. So you'll be refunded minus and less the 40% admin fee for whatever you've paid, even if you've paid every single thing. But now the de developer defaults for, I don't care whose fault is it, then I want to refund you at like literally give you what they give you. And so let's say some people were saying they got some in the middle team for I think like 19 point something million. Um, they want to refund you 19, whatever it is, they're refunding you 19 point something million, like a few years down the line. And the thing is this, you use that client's money to start the foundation and to build it to wherever it is and then you refund the client back and then you're able to either gather funds or you're able to resell that in the secondary market at a higher price so at the end of the, day, the developer took no risk yes i mean you may talk about risk to your reputation but you to you you actually have no risk involved if i did have a case a client in london reached out to me and a developer did that to them i'm not going to call the developer's name and then they told her Oh, the costs are rising and we're not able to deliver. But they're still building for other clients in that same development. And they want to give her back her money. And she's saying, okay, if you want to give me back your money, my money, it's not the same conversion. Give me in the same pound equivalent that I gave you this money some three, five years ago. And imagine pound was like maybe 500. Yeah, it was around like circa 500, not even up to 500. 
you know, some three, four years ago. And you want to give the person the Naira's equivalent now, four years later, when Naira is 2002. That's useless. Even if you gave it to somebody that stays in Nigeria, that's useless. So, like, I am seeing it from the part of the developer, obviously, but I, I can't just help but shake up shake out the feeling that developer is still coming out as the biggest winner and it's kind of like schrodinger's cat um i have a development in via that made a lot of money for my clients in like three months uh i came across something by that developer they have another development that's just in, in that same access and somebody has said for many many years these people have not delivered and it's a case of a good developer having a bad project and uh, each and every player and stakeholder would have um, would be a good guy to some people. Who we'll make a lot of money, would um, deliver to a certain set of people that will have a good experience. But um, some people might have a bad experience from a different side of them. So it's I think I realize it's just tough all the way around, and it's tough for many people. A lot of people involved. But I think there's also something that he said that was really really important. And that I also kind of disagree with. He said, but here's the truth. Every industry has its challenges, which is true. Whether it's real estate, tech, agriculture, or any other field, the hurdles are immense. But we're entrepreneurs. We thrive on vision, resilience, and innovation. While governments may create enabling environments or fail to its entrepreneurs who create opportunities and employment and economic growth, the economy depends more on us, more than we often realize. And I 100% disagree with that because i think a lot of the issues that we are in is because of bad policy so we should not absolve the government anyways from this a lot of bad policy has played on to the fact that we have you know we are we are facing unprecedented inflation and also we are facing depreciation and devaluation such that has not been precedented but that another political discussion for another day what do you think thank you so very much for watching um are you going to take the pond at landway at 19 million for 300 square meter 150 million for 500 square meters what do you think of the vision is it something that is it where you might find yourself living maybe you rent do you think it it is something that is going to be um at the end of the day like <laughs> you know is feasible with the kind of high sounding and really really um ambitious ambitious things that they want to do they've already started they're already showing you proof of work proof of concept is a work in progress and barring all of all these issues who doesn't have issues you know life is not perfect but like i do think that if their reputation um some couple years anything to go by I'm seeing at the end of the day they are they're coming out um on the other side. I know the five hundred plus people that he mentioned that didn't have such a good experience that they've had to reform they've had to kind of walk around their contract you may you may leave it like a bit of taste in your mouth, but like I did say um some of it is just unfortunate and but it's a Schrodinger's card situation, so it's either the company. At every given point in time, every developer is either good or bad. So it depends. <laughs> it depends on maybe the side that you get to encounter. Anyways, that's all for me. Thank you so very much for watching. This is the only home TV show here. Only home. Believe in any home. Only the property should not make you lose sleep. So we are committed to giving you the very best property recommendations and so the real estate. Just kindly like, kindly share, kindly subscribe, and I'll see you at the very next video. Bye bye.